React is one of the most popular JavaScript libraries that is used for front-end development. According to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey 2020, React has taken over its rivals such as Vue and Angular when it comes to the most loved and the most wanted frameworks. So if you are an aspiring front-end or full-stack developer, React is something that you should be aware of. So hey guys, welcome back to a whole new exciting session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha, and in today's session, we'll be discussing on how to learn React. We're going to start off the session by understanding why it is important to learn React, followed by what exactly is React. Then, we shall take a look at the most important features of React and the prerequisites required to learn it. Following that, we shall take a look at React's architecture and a few important concepts such as components, state and props, keys, debugging, and event handling and manipulation of state. We are also going to take a look at the learning curve of React, followed by which we'll be understanding the importance of project-oriented learning. And finally, we'll take a look at some of the developer communities that will be helpful in learning React. So without any further delays, let's move on. Before understanding what exactly is React, let's see why it is important to learn React. Now, there are so many JavaScript frameworks that are available in the market, but still, React comes into picture. Let's dive a little deeper and find out the reason why React.js was needed. The previous frameworks were using a traditional data flow model, just as you can see on the screen. Here, the data is received from various sources like initial data, real-time data, and user input data, which is passed to the dispatcher. The dispatcher then forwards the data to the store from where it ultimately comes to the view. Now, the view is the part where the user interacts with the application. So whatever you see on the browser as a web page is nothing but the view itself. So what exactly happens at the backend of the frameworks using this traditional data flow? Each time new data is added or any data is updated at the backend, the browser reloads the web page and repeats the whole process all over again. Only after this, we can see the updated data on the view. But this traditional data flow has one major drawback, that is, it uses the DOM or the document object model. DOM is basically an object that is created by the browser each time a web page is loaded, which can dynamically add or remove the data at the back end. But each time any modifications were done, a new DOM is created for the same page. This repeated creation of DOM results in unnecessary memory wastage and a decrease in application's performance. Moreover, manipulating the DOM was very expensive. Therefore, there was a search for new technology which could save us from this trouble. So this is where React.js comes into picture. With React.js, you can divide your entire application into various independent components. React.js applications still use the same traditional data flow, but something has changed at the backend. Take a look at the diagram that is shown on your screens. So now, each time any data is added or updated from the backend, React.js uses a new tactic to deal with it. Instead of reloading the entire page, what React does is it destroys the old view. After that, it renders the view components with updates or the new data and then places the new view in place of the old one. As a solution to the memory wastage due to DOM, React introduced the virtual DOM concept. You might be curious about what virtual DOM is and how it solves the problem. Do not worry guys, because I'll be discussing that later on in the session. For now, let's understand what exactly is React. React is a component-based library which is used to develop interactive UI or user interfaces. It is currently one of the most popular JavaScript front-end libraries, which has a strong foundation and a large community supporting it. Please make a note over here that React.js is only a front-end library and it is not a whole framework. It basically deals with the view component of the MVC or the model view controller architecture. In React.js, everything is a component. Consider a one Lego house as an entire application. Then compare each of these Lego blocks to a component which acts as a building block. These blocks or components are integrated together to build one bigger and dynamic application. The biggest advantage of using components is that you can change any component at any time without affecting the rest of the application. This feature is most effective when implemented with larger and real-time applications where data changes frequently. Each time any data is added or updated, React.js automatically updates the specific component whose state has actually changed. 
This saves the browser from the task of reloading the whole application to reflect the changes. React.js was developed by Jordan Walk, a software engineer working at Facebook. Facebook implemented React.js in 2011 in the newsfeed section. However, it was released to the public in May 2013. After the implementation of React.js, Facebook's UI underwent a drastic improvement. This in turn resulted in satisfied users and a sudden boost in Facebook's popularity. So now that you have a basic idea of what is React, let's move on and take a look at the features of React. JSX. JSX stands for JavaScript XML. It's an XML or HTML-like syntax used by React. It extends the ECMAScript script so that XML and HTML-like text can coexist along with JavaScript React code. This syntax is used by the preprocessors like Babel to transform HTML-like text found in JavaScript files into standard JavaScript objects. With JSX, we can go a step further by again embedding the HTML code inside the JavaScript. This makes HTML codes easy to understand and boosts JavaScript's performance while making our application robust. A virtual DOM. Like an actual DOM, a virtual DOM is also a node tree that lists the elements and their attributes and content as objects and their properties. React's render function creates a node tree out of the React components. It then updates this tree in response to the mutations in data model caused by various actions done either by the user or by the system itself. The virtual DOM basically works in three steps. First, whenever any of the underlying data changes, the entire UI is re-rendered in the virtual DOM representation. Then, the difference between the previous DOM representation and the new one is calculated. Once the calculations are completed, the real DOM will be updated with only those changes that have actually been made. You can think of this as a patch. In a virtual DOM, the changes are applied only to those elements which have actually changed or updated. This will not just make our application faster, but also there is no memory wastage. Testability. React views can be used as functions of the state. Here, State is basically an object which determines how a component will render and behave. Thus, we can easily manipulate with the state of the components, which we pass to the React.js view and take a look at the output and triggered actions, events, functions, etc. This makes React applications quite easy to test and debug. Server-side rendering or SSR. Server-side rendering allows you to pre-render the initial state of your React components at the server side itself. With SSR, the server's response to the browser becomes only the HTML of the page which is now ready to be rendered. Thus, the browser can now start rendering without having to wait for all the JavaScript to be loaded and executed. As a result, the web page loads faster. Here, the user will be able to see the web page in spite of React still downloading the JavaScript, creating the virtual DOM, linking events, etc. at the backend. One-way data binding. Unlike other frameworks, React.js follows the unidirectional data flow or one-way data binding. A major advantage of one-way data binding is that throughout the application, the data flows in a single direction, which gives you better control over it. Because of this, application state is contained in specific stores, and as a result, rest of the components remain loosely coupled. This makes our application more flexible, leading to increased efficiency. Simplicity. The use of JSX files makes the application really simple, easy to code and understand as well. Even though you can use plain JavaScript over here, using JSX is much easier. React's component-based approach along with the distinct lifestyle methods also makes it very much simple to learn. So that was about the features of React. Okay, so now that you've understood the features of React, let's move on and take a look at the prerequisites that are required in order to learn React. The first and foremost prerequisite is HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it is the standard markup language for creating web pages and web applications. A markup language is a computer language that is used to apply layout and formatting conventions to a text document. Markup languages make the text more interactive and dynamic. It can also turn text into images, tables, links, etc. The next prerequisite that you will need to know is CSS. 
CSS basically stands for cascading style sheets. CSS is a technology that is proposed and developed by the World Wide Web Consortium or the W3C for short. It was released to help free web developers from the tedious process of inline styling and make styling a separate entity in itself. Next up is JavaScript. JavaScript is a lightweight interpreted programming language with object oriented capabilities that allows you to build interactivity into otherwise static HTML pages. The general purpose core of this language has been embedded in Netscape, Internet Explorer and almost all of the web browsers. Following JavaScript is NPM. NPM stands for Node Packet Manager. It is the default packet manager of Node.js that is completely written in JavaScript. It was developed by Isaac Z. Schluter. It was released in 2010 and since then it is responsible for managing all the Node.js packages and modules. NPM is the world's largest software registry which is completely free and open sourced. Developers all over the world make use of NPM for sharing software. Code editors are IDEs. Code editors and IDEs or integrated development environments are platforms where programmers write their code and produce their final products. Some examples are Sublime Text, Atom, Visual Studio Code, etc. So basically, if you want to write your React code, you will need to make use of any of the code editors or IDEs. Okay, so now moving on towards the next topic, which is the React architecture. As mentioned earlier, React is the V in the MVC architecture. The M or model architecture is provided by Flux. Flux is an architectural pattern that enforces a unidirectional data flow. It controls derived data and enables the communication between multiple components using a central store which has authority over all the data. Any update in data throughout the application must occur here itself. Flux provides stability to the application and reduces runtime errors. So now let's take a look at some of the important concepts in React. The first thing that you should be aware of is components. In React.js, everything is a component. If you guys remember, I've already given the one Lego house application example earlier on in the session. Just like the Lego blocks are combined together to make a single structure, components in React are integrated together to build one bigger and dynamic application. So therefore, in React, the entire application can be modeled as a set of independent components. These components basically serve different purposes. Components also enable us to keep the logic and the view separate. In React, multiple components are rendered simultaneously. State and props. State is the heart of React components. They are basically the source of data and must be kept as simple as possible. Basically, States are the objects which determine the components rendering and behavior. They are mutable and can create dynamic and interactive components. States in React are accessed via this state function. States also have something called as state lifecycle. So basically, we need to initialize resources to components according to the requirements. This is called as mounting in React. It is critical to clear these resources taken by components whenever they are destroyed. This is done in order to manage the performance and is called as unmounting in React. It is not essential to use state lifecycle methods, but you can use them if you wish to control the complete resource allocation and retrieval process. Props. Props is the shorthand for properties in React. They are read-only components that must be kept pure or immutable. Props are always passed down from the parent to the child components throughout the application. So therefore, all the user needs to do is change the parent component state while the changes are passed down to the child component through props. On the other hand, a child component can never send a prop back to the parent component. This helps in maintaining the unidirectional data flow and is generally used to render the dynamically generated data. Keys. Keys in React provide identity to components. Keys are the means by which React identifies components uniquely. While working with individual components, we do not require keys as React takes care of key assignment according to their rendering order. However, we need a strategy to differentiate between thousands of elements in a list. So this is where keys come into picture. If we need to access the last component in a list using keys, it saves us from 
traversing the entire list sequentially. Keys also serve to keep a track of which items have been manipulated. They should be given elements inside the array to give elements a stable identity. Debugging in React. Now there will be a point when a developer goes through a roadblock. It could be as simple as a missing bucket or as tricky as segmentation falls. In any case, the earlier the exception is caught, the lesser is the cost overhead. React uses compile time debugging and detects errors at an early stage. This ensures that errors don't silently turn up at the runtime. Facebook's unidirectional data flow allows clean and smooth debugging, fewer stack traces, lesser clutter, and an organized flux architecture for bigger applications. Event handling and manipulation of state. Whenever an event such as a button click or a mouse hover occurs, we need to handle these events and perform the appropriate actions. This is done using event handlers. So those were some of the important concepts of React that you should know when you're learning React. So now, talking about the learning curve of React. React, unlike Angular, has a shallow learning curve and it is very much suitable for beginners. The ES6 syntax is easier to manage, especially for smaller to-do applications. In React, you code in the JavaScript way, giving you the freedom to choose your tool depending upon your need. On the other hand, Angular expects you to learn one additional tool, that is TypeScript, which can be viewed as the Angular way of doing things. In Angular, you need to learn the entire framework if you're just building a simple UI application. Now let's move on. So once you're done with learning the basic concepts of React, you will have to adopt the project-oriented learning approach. This is because whenever you create a project, you will have a 360-degree learning. This is because when you create a project, you will have to do everything by yourself. Therefore, you'll make use of all the programming concepts, resulting in better understanding and implementation. Remember that you do not have to master the world in your first project itself. So start off by choosing a very simple one. Complete it by yourself and try your best not to copy anything from anywhere else. As you proceed, you can take up bigger applications and work on them. It is sure that you will face difficulties while making your applications. However, it comes with the reward of learning. If you are stuck at some point in your project, try to break down your problem into minor parts and then work on each of them one at a time. Now, once you've decided to learn React, remember that you're not alone. There are a number of developer communities that will help you along the road. In this session, I'm going to be discussing about GitHub, Stack Overflow, and Edureka community. GitHub, as many of you would be aware of, is the world's leading software platform that brings together developers from all over the world. It allows you to build your programs, share your work, or discover what you are looking for. You can also engage with other programmers by asking them your doubts, etc. Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is another open community that entertains anyone who wants to code. It will provide you with some of the best answers for even the most trickiest questions and errors, and will also help you share your knowledge with others using Stack Overflow. Not to forget, if you have any doubts or queries regarding any of the technologies, you guys can also check out the Edureka community website and get all your queries answered by experts. Also make a note that the key to remember what you learn is to share. So make sure you share what you learn with others. Last but not the least, stay updated. Technology sees new heights every day. The version that you learn today will get modified in the upcoming days. So make sure you keep yourself updated with all the latest React versions and update your projects accordingly. This brings us to the end of the session. I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more exciting sessions, but till then, goodbye and take care.